Hello and welcome to Physics Video Fluids Point 3B. In this video we are going to do some calculations using the uh, equation of continuity to look at flow rates as well as look at Bernoulli's principle and use Bernoulli's equation. For the first question, we have a 14 centimeter radius air duct, and it's used to replace the air in a room 8.2 meters by 5 meters by 3.5 meters every 12 minutes. The question is, how fast is the air flow in the duct? So if we start with a room, 8.2 meters, 5 meters, 3.5 meters, we've got a duct. Back here, radius of 14 centimeters, and we are looking for the airflow in the duct. So we want to use the equation of continuity, and in that we know that there has to be equal things occurring in all places. So we can start by looking at the equation that the area of the duct times the speed of air in the duct must be equal to pi r squared times the speed in the duct. And that has to be equal to the flow rate of the room. So that would be the volume of the room over the time it takes to fill the room. So if I solve this for the velocity of air in the duct, we have the volume of the room over pi r squared times our time. So we've got all of our numbers up here at the top. Some of them are in different units than what we can use them for, so we'll have to change them a little bit. But this becomes the volume of the room, 8.2 times 5.0 times 3.5 divided by pi times the radius. Radius is 14 centimeters, so it becomes 0.14 meters squared times the time. Well, the time is 12 minutes, and we have to change the 12 minutes to seconds, so I'm going to multiply it by 60, because then the minutes will go away. And if we plug that into our calculator, we find out that the airflow in the duct is 3.2 meters per second. And this again all comes because the equation of continuity allows us to look at it as a flow rate, a volumetric flow rate of the fluid. Let's do another one. We have a 6.5 centimeter diameter horizontal pipe gradually narrows to 5 centimeters. When water flows through this pipe at a certain rate, the gauge pressure in the two sections is 33.5 kilopascals and 22.6 kilopascals respectively. What is the volume flow rate? Well, remember the volume flow rate is the A1 V1 that we were just looking at previously. So we need to start by looking at the equation of continuity to relate the volume flow of water at the two locations. So A1 V1 must equal A2 V2. I want to know um, the volume flow rate, so I'm just going to solve this in terms of V2 so that we can do some canceling out of things. So I'm going to solve this for V2 and end up with this being V1 A1 over A2. These are circular horizontal pipes. So our area then becomes pi R1 squared over pi r2 squared. The pi's cancel. So v2 is v1 r1 squared over r2 squared. So keep that in mind. 
Next, we need to use Bernoulli's equation to relate the pressure conditions at the two locations. It says a horizontal pipe, so that means that they are at the same height. So remember Bernoulli's equation, and we are told that these are gauge pressures. So the gauge pressure means that we have to add in our uh, atmospheric pressure as well. So we have PO plus P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho GY1 is equal to PO plus P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared plus rho GY2. We've said that they're at the same level, so rho GY1 and rho GY2 are going to cancel each other. And we have a PO on both sides, so those are going to cancel each other out. So what we end up with is that P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared. We have what V2 is. That's up here. So let's substitute that in. And the left, sorry, the right hand side becomes P2 plus 1 half rho V1 squared R1 to the fourth over R2 to the fourth. And it's to the fourth because we have to square our V. So this looks like a pretty ugly equation here, but if we continue to simplify it and we combine um, terms and find V1, we end up with finding that V1 is the square root of 2 times P1 minus P2 over rho times R1 to the fourth over R2 to the fourth minus 1. This is what our V1 is. We aren't interested in V1. We are interested in A1V1 because we are interested in the volume flow rate. So that means we have to take this whole thing and multiply it by A1, which would be pi r squared. So A1V1 then is equal to pi times 3.2. 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 squared, because remember 6.5 centimeters is the diameter, so divided by 2, change it to meters, times the square root of 2 times 33.5 times 10 to the third minus 22.6 times 10 to the third and again, times 10 to the third, because these are in kilopascals, divided by the density. We are talking about water. So the density is 1 times 10 to the third times 3.25 times 10 to the negative 2 to the fourth over 2.5 times 10 to the negative second to the fourth minus one. That mess becomes 0 0.003318 times the square root of 21,800 over one times 10 to the third times 2.8. 8561 minus 1, which becomes 11.4 times 10 to the negative 3 meters cubed per second. Now this is a pretty bizarre set of units for what we are used to seeing. We aren't used to seeing meters cubed, but keep in mind it's an area times a velocity, and that velocity is dependent on radii 
to the fourth, the square root of radii to the fourth. So 11.4 times 10 to the negative three meters cubed per second is the volume flow, volume rate of flow for water in this pipe. Let's do one more. A fire hose exerts a force on a person holding it. This is because the water accelerates as it goes from the hose through the nozzle. How much force is required to hold a seven centimeter diameter hose delivering 200, sorry, delivering 420 liters per minute through a 0.75 centimeter diameter nozzle? A big difference in diameters between the hose and the nozzle. So think about it for a minute and you will realize that there is a forward force on the exiting water. So by Newton's third law, there must be an equal force pushing backward on the hose. So if there's our hose, water's pushing that way. So there must be a reaction force going back that way. To keep the hose stationary, you push forward on the hose, so the hose pushes backwards on you. So the force on the exiting water is the same magnitude as the force on the person hosed, holding the hose. If you use Newton's second law and the equation of continuity, you can find that force. Now keep in mind that the 450 liters per minute flow rate is the volume of water being accelerated per unit time. And remember that the flow rate is the product of the cross-sectional area of the moving fluid and the speed of the fluid. So in other words, just like what we had seen before, volume per time is A1V1, which should also be A2V2. We want to use Newton's second law, so F equals MA. Well, in this case, our A, we don't want to think about it in terms of A, but we want to think about it in terms of delta V over T. So V2 minus V1 over T. And I don't want my mass to um, really be in play here. Instead, I want my densities. So then my densities, I can switch this up again and say that this is density times my volume flow rate times V2 minus V1. My V2, if we go back to this relationship here, I can write my V2s in terms of V1s and A's. I can write my V2 in terms of A2s, and I can write my V1s in terms of A1s. So this then can become rho V over T times A2 V2 over A2 minus A1 V1 over A1. And you might be sitting there thinking, why the heck would you ever want to do that? Well, because remember, we're talking about a flow rate of a fluid. So if we can write rather than just our speeds, but we write it in terms of our flow rate in, of the fluid, then some things start to cancel. In particular, we know that A1 V1 is equal to a2 v2 so we can pull that out the a2 v2 minus a1 v1 we can pull that out and we can put it in terms of v over t and we can then say that the force is rho v over t squared times 1 over a2 minus one over A1. So again, this sleight of hand here allows us to take a fairly complicated numerator and set them to be the same, then say, well, that's really just a V over T and pull that out of our multiplication. And we know that A2 is going to be 
pi r2 squared and a1 is going to be pi r1 squared. So now we're finally at the point where we can add numbers to this. So we're talking about water again. So 1 times 10 to the third times the volume flow rate. It's given in liters per minute. We need it in cubic meters per second. So 420 liters per minute times one minute has 60 seconds and a thousand liters is a cubic meter. And then from that we are going to multiply one over pi r squared. So pi times 0.75 centimeters, half of that, um, then change to meters, then squared. So one half times 0.75 times 10 to the negative 2 squared minus 1 over pi times 1 half of 7 times 10 to the negative 2 squared. And we multiply that whole mess together, we end up with 1103 newtons, which based on the amount of sake figs we have up there, we can say that the force on the firefighter is approximately 1,100 newtons in order to keep the hose steady while they're fighting the fire. So a few things about this problem that make it a little bit weird. Um, number one is that we are looking at it in terms of F equals MA. But at the same time, we are looking at it in terms of the equation of continuity and the volumetric flow rate. So we start with F equals MA. We make the A into a delta V over delta T. Then we change mass into density, which gives us back to our flow rate there over time. Because remember that mass is equal to rho V. So we put a row V there and then we just commandeer the M to go with it. And then we rearrange the V2 and V1s to include the areas in them so that we can then get yet another volumetric flow rate. And then we're okay to go ahead and plug in our values. So these three examples that we've done are varied enough that you should have plenty of uh, stuff to look at as you start the next assignment. Bye for now.